important topic to this very important forum international my showcase 2.0 well friends this forum is to reflect the preparedness of our sectors to open up effectively we all know our industry is in a turmoil we are in a bad shape shows have stopped new models are evolving we are uncertain of the future but friends let me remind you my industry is a resilient force since centuries we have taken a lot of setbacks and we have bounced back stronger this is also an opportunity for us to evolve ourselves and to emerge stronger today we are going to discuss on how to bring back our participants to the show floor how to bring back the buzz and what needs to be changed so that the participants can back get back much more confident and get more business through our platform because exhibitions and conferences drive your business like no one else does so with this i'd like to invite and thank all our esteemed speakers who have gathered today from all around the world and they are going to share their deep insights because they are very very well known experts in their domains so let me welcome our esteemed speakers with this i'd like to formally uh, uh, open up the session and i'd like to uh, welcome our esteemed speakers I'd like to welcome Ms. Himani Gulati, who is the director of Max Exhibitions. Mr. Igor Palka, who is the director of Messe Munchen. Uh, Mr. Peter, who is the president of IFES. It's a very important federation for service providers. Mr. Ravi Boratka, managing director, Asian Convention and Expositions. Mr. Deyaka Reddy, who is the president of IPAMA. Mr. Vikas Vich, managing director, ITEX. We also uh, we also like to welcome Mr. Anil Arora. Currently, is not with us. Probably sometime later when he joins, we'll take him in the meeting. With this, uh, I would like to invite Mr. Peter to give the opening remarks and open up this session for the future discussions ahead. So what what do you see the scenario currently all around the world? Because service partners play a very significant role. They are the people on the ground. They know the industry in and out. Can we revive our industry, and is there scope of bringing them back with equal enthusiasm in the future? Thank you, Rakhav. Thank you, everybody, for being here. And days that are evolving as the world is changing right now, we are seeing that on a daily basis, uh, the word confidence, uh, which I would like to start from there, uh, is changing. Uh, confidence is truly a very significant word within our industry. And I'd like to say, by, uh, to begin by saying, what is confidence, first of all? Confidence is what comes out of ourselves. And this is truly uh, the ability of feeling yourself secure. And this is the key word here. Our industry needs to be secure. And for this reason, I believe that uh, on a global basis, both IFAS, the International Federation of Exhibition Services and Events that I represent, are working uh, constantly to feel this security. And with this, I think that I bring uh, the, the platform I open to my fellow esteemed uh, speakers as well. I think security is a vital word here. And on a constant and on a daily basis, we see that more and more we are getting secure. On a recent uh, research that just last week, 170 research companies are working for the vaccine. 170 companies. This is extremely important. I mean, from one day to another, a lot of them on the third phase, and we are seeing that most of our colleagues worldwide are expecting this to be happening as soon as possible. Very rightly said, confidence is a main thing that is going to drive our industry going ahead. I'd like to invite Mr. Igor Palka. Um, uh, Igor, you represent one of the largest leading players in the industry and you can give us a clear perspective about what measures uh, have you been taking uh, so far or you plan to take to bring back the participants? Yeah, um, thank you very much for having me here on this panel and I agree with Peter that it all starts with the basis of confidence and, and safety basically. Um, we have uh, actually from September onwards uh, here in Munich and Bavaria, the state of Bavaria, trade shows and exhibitions are allowed. They are not mass gatherings at, as, as per definition. So trade shows are considered an extraordinary event that can place, take place. Uh, and obviously we as Mr. München um, have been working several weeks and months now on, on the right health 
and safety measures that need to be implemented, but also need to be adjusted um, based on the current circumstances worldwide. Um, for our upcoming shows now in September and October, we have obviously based on the regulations which are being defined with the uh, government, the state government of Bavaria, defined certain uh, regulations uh, which are not very different from the regulations or rules that you that we are um, using and um, yeah we are dealing with on a daily basis. It means the distancing, uh, the wearing of masks, the hygienic uh, aspects. Um, and how can this all be transferred to, to mass events, exhibitions of a few thousand people gathered in one place? Um, so there are many aspects. One is, of course, also uh, the data collection at the very beginning to know who is present at the exhibitions, who is present at what time, at which part of the exhibition, so that any tracking can be allowed. But on the other hand, then we follow um, clear, uh, strict rules that if um, so the mandatory distance of 1.5 meters, um, that's around five feet, um, shall be kept throughout the ongoing of the exhibition. If that is not possible, because you want to interact on a, on a, in a conversation, then a mask is being mandatory. And obviously, we as, we as an organizer are taking care of all the um, measurements with regards to cleaning, um, with regards to disinfection, with regards to providing all of that uh, material to the exhibitors. That is, I think, a, a must have, and you cannot discuss that. The exhibitors and visitors are, are not demanding it, but are believing that this is there anyway. Um, but in order to give them more confidence and giving them the idea, okay, it's, it's really safe to be here, uh, we are going a step further and evaluating, okay, what are the, what are the biggest risks and the fear factors of our customers. We need to understand what is driving them or not driving them to the exhibition. So we have done a lot of surveys internally with all our numerous uh, international exhibitions. What are the key drivers for them to attend the show and what would stop them from coming to Munich? And obviously we cannot do much about the travel restrictions. Keeping the travel restrictions currently out, um, it's a lot about transparency and communication. They want to know what's the current status at the show, who is there, who's present. So a lot about goes into lead tracking, analyzing and tracking the movement around of the show um, at the fairground and, and showing transparency with all of that information that we have towards the customers, towards the exhibitors and visitors, because I believe it would be a harm to our exhibitions worldwide and to our brands that we keep that information for us and see that there's a, a kind of data pool, a collection pool and we keep that for marketing purposes. It's here, the purpose of that collection of information is for security and safety measures and keeping everyone very well informed what the status is so that anyone, even let's say five minutes before he enters the trade fair, he could see how many people are inside, who is inside, and if I can still make that call and say, okay, Maybe I'll come back later or the day after if that's too risky for me. But I think there's much well more beyond said. that. Very well said. And I think these metrics have to be taken into account and a lot of, uh, lot of uh, you know, co uh, planning has to be done to make sure that, that uh, the, the protocols and confidence building measures are in place so that safety, uh, uh, safety can, uh, cannot be compromised going ahead. And uh, I'd like to go to uh, Mr. Dayakar Reddy. Uh, Mr. Reddy, you are you are one of the leading uh, associations who are organizing their large scale exhibition, you know, machinery exhibition. Uh, I'd like to take comments from you. You you must have been talking to your uh, exhibitors of late. How confident are they uh, in the in the strength of our of our industry to provide them their business revival? And would they like to come back soon? Yeah, uh, uh, it's a good question, uh, Raghav. Uh, well. Uh, since uh, ours is Association of uh, Printing and Allies Machinery Manufacturers Association, uh, some of our members had uh, their own doubts whether, uh, because you know our show is in February, it's not in this year in fact. So we are, we are somewhat lucky in that way. Uh, but what we were uh, talking to many uh, exhibitors and our members, uh, what is realistic happening at this point of movement is every company is getting a good number of inquiries, but the conversion of those inquiries into orders is very, very less, very, very less. So 
So maybe, maybe the customers are just uh, uh, inquiring them about the specs and, and prices and other things. So as a resident of Ipama, representing 550 members across the country, I strongly believe that you know uh, uh, regular this exhibition platforms, wherein you know our show is biannual, two years now. So when we exhibit at once, we do get about 2,000, 3,000 inquiries from those exhibitions. So then those exhibition inquiries will be converted into next couple of years into orders. That is not there. You know, uh, last January we had one exhibition in India. Then after that, there was hardly any exhibition. And secondary, maybe people are really talking about virtual exhibitions, but uh, virtual exhibitions is not suitable for the, uh, the capital equipments like us. So now the big question, how to restore confidence on exhibitor, uh, visitors and exhibitors at the same time both. So what we were trying to do is our exhibitors, we were as we uh, if most of the people knows us, you know, we are the one of the competitive pricing across the globe. I would always say this word across the globe because again, last six, edi four editions, I think 2013 onwards, we have not raised our prices. So still we are extending the same support to our exhibitors to get you know, financial uh, support to them. That is very key important. You know, you all know, like print pack kind of thing, you know, 60, 70,000 square meter exhibition, each exhibitor spends a handsome money. So at least they should have given that liberty to, you know, uh, uh, as an association, we can share them. And secondly, I'm thankful to our uh, organize, uh, our fair, uh, fairground uh, company, that's uh, Indian Ex India Expo Mart uh, people, because you know that's a lavish 57,000, 57 acres uh, property, uh, wherein we can definitely plan well. SOP, all SOPs, what government and other indus industry uh, experts are talking about, we will definitely follow all those uh, SOPs. And and uh, the good part uh, from our exhibition is ours is a B two B. So 90% of our visitors is known to any our. our, our organizer as well as exhibitor so for us uh, uh, giving confidence to our visitor our exhibitors we have already working last couple of months we have been already working on it and i'm sure uh, uh, in india uh, in our segment of course as, as usually we are the leaders in our uh, segment so we will be bringing back the glory into february first week surely i think i think that is very important that you need to be continuously engaged with your clients to make sure that they trust our platform and with this i'd move to miss imani and uh, imani you 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 are one of those organizers who have always thought out of the box and uh, you recently also organized you also ventured into virtual exhibition and you've been doing webinars also do you feel that the the virtual events the online events can can help us get back to shape or do you feel they are a threat to our uh, our, our main identity as per se I think exhibitions are tactile and there is no substitution to an exhibition. Face-to-face -face networking is there to stay. You know, the visceral excitement of being at a live event or, you know, interacting with like-minded people, that cannot be taken away. Uh, whether we have technologies like uh, VR, AI, or anything more advanced, nothing can take away the physical events, but yes, this pandemic has certainly taught us that these technologies are going to aid us in the future to make it a better experience for both the exhibitors and the visitors. And it's going to become a wholesome experience. Like at the event, we connect uh, for three days. So the virtual uh, platform is going to help us uh, have a 365 days connect between the buyers and the exhibitors, which is going to be very, very beneficial. So, you know, it's kind of hybrid is going to be the future. The business matching, uh, you know, the technology uh, that we can showcase through our webinars, you know, the technology exchange that can happen. So all these are there to stay. But like said, there is no substitute for the physical. Absolutely. There's no substitute. And uh, I'd like to move to Mr. Vikas. Uh, you, you are a thought leader and you have, been, you have been exploring the world, various regions, moving to various regions, knowing the industry inside out. What do you pick of the upcoming trends for our industry and what can we do to bring the participants back once the industry opens up in our region? Again, thanks, Raga, for having me on this on the webinar and you know, being with you know, like-minded um, 
experts from the industry. Uh, with regards to one, one is defining participants because you know one one thing we have to look at participants. We as organisers automatically think exhibitors, right? So one is building confidence with them, but beneath that, and if we as organisers and you know in the events industry, um, sometimes we have very little control over what we can do because we're a, we're a symbiotic. We have a symbiotic relationship with the industries that we focus on. So for example. At IDEX, you know, we work in beauty and wellness, healthcare, you know, and medicine. Um, you know, we are, you know, we, we have our global shows across, you know, UK, Europe, um, at least, etc. But, and I'm, you know, I'm quite a gung ho, buoyant kind of let's get going, you know, and we were trying to open up in August and September. And no matter how much we as organizers want to get going and think, okay, great, um, market might be picking up let's do something in november december january let's let's do as much as possible the reality in the last few months from talking to exhibitors and it's and actually deeper than that is talking to the visitor community because if the visitors are not ready no matter what you try as an organizer the exhibitors are not going to show up and we've seen that we were really prepared to you know go with our flagship show which was meant to be in three weeks time that it's just not possible. So no matter how much we want to do as organizers, if the market is not ready, if the economy is not there, if the confidence is not there at the, um, at the economic level with your visitors, there's nothing we can do as organizers, right? So I know that's quite a, um, you know, a downside kind of note to talk about, but actually we can talk as much as we want about building confidence, health and safety, you know, is, is going to be there. So as long as we've got good government guidelines in place, association guidelines in place, we need the venues to really step up. You know, I've not seen anything in India from a venue point of view. I haven't seen much from the association point of view. So in India, I actually think as an industry, we're doing a pretty bad job of getting going as, as mice industry. Um, Europe is far ahead. You, I'm in the UK right now, um, you know, because we have our UK office. You know, UK is far ahead in terms of venues working together with organizers to get going. Um, but I, you know, I agree with what Himani said, which is we are not going to replicate, we are not going to be able to replace physical events anytime soon. Um, I think that's probably a generation away because if I look at my, I've got two young children, a 12 year old boy, and they, they connect at a very different level. Right. So they don't need the physical platforms as much as we do. So when the, if you see kids, especially boys, you know, talking to each other or connecting, they could be they were sitting miles apart in different houses. They could be sitting next to each other and they're connecting via their own gaming devices. Right. So that generation may not need physical events like what our current generation does. So I think a generation away physical events will be at risk in the short term. And the short term is, you know, what, the next 10 years or so, we're not at risk. I agree that we are still social animals. We need to connect. We need to meet each other. We need to shake hands, look each other in the eye, test products. Um, this, I don't believe the virtual experience is that good actually. Um, so uh, we've done 200 live events since April across Facebook. Instagram, Zoom, um, and you know we've got our global virtual show next week, which is you know professionalbeauty.world, but it's that's not going to replace physical events. So in terms of a threat to us, I don't think so. Any in the short term, I do think there's a lot to learn. Like Imani was saying about how do you use this technology to connect throughout the year with your communities um, and build better experiences. Um, but we're already seeing, you know, there's many technologies doing the same thing. And after a while there, you know, it's, it's basically like an enhanced LinkedIn profile, right? And you go in, you match make, et cetera. Um, but I know talking to our clients, they can't wait to get back to the exhibitions, meeting each other. But unfortunately for us, we're at the mercy of not the exhibitors, right? My exhibitors have just said to us, forget this financial year. So whatever you, the guys are trying to do, if, if you think December, you want to do something, January, February, forget it. This financial year is a mess. Write it off. Start in the next financial year. So it's actually, and no matter what I want to do, and I was trying to push Jan, Feb, March to them, do research about launching an event in India. And they're like, forget it. 
we are not going to do it because this year we have no idea how big a mess we're in um, because our clients are in a mess as well and the clients are in a mess and and this is where Peter and Eagle will come in and I can see from UK perspective um, the government I think is doing a very bad job from revising the economy and incentivizing citizens and businesses in India there's very little support we're getting as a business community India has always functioned as um, you do business and you thrive despite the efforts of the government. So while government sleeps, India operates, right? And that is how India functions. So even in this pandemic, we're not at a disadvantage because we've always known we will do what we have to function despite what the government does. And we know what's happening in the, you see the news right now, there is nothing about economic stimulus, get back to business, get, you know, none of that is there. It's all about politics and Bollywood, right? In the UK, I'm in the UK, we just arrived three weeks ago and UK is pretty much acting like normal. Everyone is out and about, hardly any masks. Uh, restaurants are open, cinemas are open. We've been going out every day with the kids to parks, playing tennis. This month, the government, as well as a furlough scheme to support businesses, keep staff employed um, and pay their salaries. This month, they've had a scheme called Eat Out to Help Out, which is Monday through Wednesday, anytime you go to any restaurant to eat in, you get a 50% rebate off your final bill. And as a customer, you don't do anything. You just eat. And at the end of the bill, it's automatically deducted 50%. And the restaurant gets that rebate from the government. And it's such a, and we've already seen now after this, it finished yesterday, but restaurants and the hospitality sector is really buoyant about that because it's helped get customers back into restaurants. It's helped restaurants open up and give them a kickstart to get going. It's helped staff come in because they were worried about um, are there going to be jobs there? Are there any customers coming in? So we're seeing that the government here is really trying to figure out how to get people back to normal um, despite us not having a vaccine, etc. We sure. don't see that in India, right? So I think no matter what we're going to do with regards to you know the health and safety and restoring confidence with our exhibitor clients, I unfortunately think we're at the mercy of the economic situation. And until that picks up, and that's where Peter's point about confidence. So I think health and safety you know, is pretty much a given now. Right? We're all pretty conscious about what we do. Different countries operate differently. You know, we are wandering around hardly with, no one's wandering around with masks in the UK. In India, we are. Like when I, when I was in India, we're wearing masks everywhere. You don't meet people. You're very conscious about not networking, not meeting. So, but that health and safety confidence, you know, is sure. pretty, you know, will be there. It's the economic reality is what we have to deal with. And, and I think that's a tough fight. And I think that's where we have to work closely as communities, as organizers, as venue, as government. That's just at that level. But it's how do we as organizers then look at how do we support the community that we represent? So if you're in the machine industry, what are, we, what are you doing to support your machine industry get up and running? We're in the beauty and wellness industry and healthcare. What can we do to restore confidence and get the economic drivers in place? Because until that's there, there's no money to spend. Right? There's literally no money for, for visitors to want to spend. Their reasons to come to shows um, isn't there anymore. You know, it's education, networking, deals, and, which, and checking out products. But end customer, isn't in that mindset to go and spend money and to look at products because they're just the economy is not you know not in a great shape and it's not going to be in a great shape for a while unfortunately so i mean but, it's a bit of a i've taken a bit of a monologue there and you know a downbeat thing but um i think that's the reality we have to deal with as organizers i think in the long term um i'm very much on himani's point of view that physical events and exhibitions are great drivers for the economy you know we we, you know, I've been an organizer for 15 years now, and I very truly believe in the physical experience. That's not going to go away anytime soon. And really, as a community, it's about how do we all survive as long as possible for when the market picks up? So I think that's a challenge you know, we all face as organizers. Great. And I think, I think you've made very elaborate points, and uh, you've made some good points also. Um, but uh, I, I, you know, I also mentioned in one of my earlier sessions 
that uh, although although we 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 can't do uh, much about the situation but then sometimes waiting for the situation to to change can be costlier than not to take any any decision at all and not evolving and not trying to evolve and you're right that uh, government here in this region but um, you know it's largely private driven industry and we've been uh, uh, always trying to be ahead of the curve and i'm sure our industry not just in india but all around the world is evolving and trying to get into new models so that they remain relevant i uh, will thank you very much uh, mr witch for those insights and uh, coming to mr borak uh, there is a purpose i am coming to you last in this round because uh, you know we we've also talked about the role of venues we know that you are you are also wearing a organizer's hat but you also have you run a very pr prominent venue in mumbai uh, tell us how what role can venue perform to to enable successful execution of exhibitions going forward and uh, to restore the confidence of the participants uh venues certainly can play a major role uh, because you know when exhibitions happen as we all know that it helps economy to grow similarly when exhibition happen in that particular center the local economy gets a good boost it generates a lot of employment in maybe formal informal sector both ways we all know so maybe venue association with the local authorities needs to come forward and have to say initiate something so that we at least start experimenting doing the event when i say so but there are different challenges uh, venue operators particularly in india are facing today because most of the leading venues have been taken over for the covid facilities you take in mumbai or bangalore or in delhi all major exhibition venues right now are catering as a facility for the covid centers so number one we have to be after the authorities to release it as early as possible and there are some good signs that soon they are going to release and then along with the some other organizers and i always feel that since it's opening up now as uh, igor told us ki they have been doing exhibitions now maybe with a new safety and hygiene protocol of course yes, even in india that ieia has come out with some guidelines we have made our own protocols and that every venue operator is going to follow but still we need to demonstrate an example so i always felt like in one of the earlier seminars raghav if you remember we had requested ki maybe organizations like itpo or ministry of commerce or msme has to come forward and organize some event either in delhi or in mumbai which is a maybe the uh, capital or the commercial capital or maybe the technology capital place like bangalore and demonstrate one event because here as uh, vikas was always saying it you know it takes time for us to implement the things in india once uh, organizations like itpo come forward or a ministry does an event the local authority gets their things message clearly then it will be easy for the private operator to come forward and do the event and he gets a good cooperation from the authorities but though there is a challenge but certain industry certain sectors are still good and are hopeful for example we have already announced an event in agriculture because we felt ki even this in challenging period agriculture was one sector which suffered to some extent but also had opportunities and uh, kept on doing well so we have announced an uh, one event in uh, november end in agriculture and fortunately with our interaction so far we have got a good feedback from all our uh, particip regular participants the only challenge now remains about the permissions and what protocol we have to follow but we had decided that we are in touch with them saying that close closer to the event maybe before 3 weeks or 4 weeks we'll set the proper guidelines but till that time we'll go ahead other possibility as simani also mentioned is that there is a good uh, way for doing the hybrid events as of now so using that technology the physical has its own importance but now since this pandemic has taught us to use the technology i think this hybrid platform will come to our rescue till the time uh, everything comes to its normalcy so with this with this uh, you know adapting to this new protocol 
to instill confidence with the uh, organizers when you operator has to work very closely with uh, other matlab exhibition organizers give them support maybe perhaps much more going beyond just offering them the spaces on rent i think in whatever way we can help them but we have to establish that some events do take place because then only the things will happen the real confidence of the exhibitors or visitors will come only after we demonstrate few exhibitions till that time everybody will have some kind of suspicion so my advice is to come forward and demonstrate few such successful examples and we are trying our best and we have already launched an initiative and i think i think with the resumption of some trade shows from uh, on in our european counterparts and china uh, we we do have some positive signals uh, on our, on our side uh, well with this i'd like to uh, go back to mr peter uh, mr peter your federation has also been doing a lot of work a lot of advocacy uh, for for the industry in the uh, in the past and also in the present uh, would you like to throw some light on the active campaigns which you are doing and also i'd like to ask you one another question on a separate theme uh, joint uh, joint with this uh, part uh, is that going forward you know uh, things will become difficult for the service partners also uh, uh, people will become choosy organizers will uh, choose only uh, very limited uh, go ahead with limited uh, number of service partners and uh, and hence uh, you know this field will become more specialized in the future what are your comments on both of these uh, these uh, topics I think that uh, to begin with on question number one, indeed, IFIS has uh, among its three hundred members. We have uh, are trying constantly and on a daily basis to try to assist both the organizers in trying to tell them that we, as stand builders and as event services, are able to comply to all the current guidelines that exist there. listening to uh the distinguished panels here i i i have to admit that there is something that we are seeing worldwide that is called a fear attendance and this fear attendance seems to be that obviously if we read the media on a daily basis we see that currently south america is in a very difficult position europe theoretically is going to go through a second wave and asia as far as we are reading now certain countries are now lowering uh the this r uh line and so on forth however there are indiscrepancies and these indiscrepancies are the ones that cause us to try to see where and how do we drive these guidelines do not forget that uh listening to vikas for example what happens in the uk we are very strict in the uk regulations how strict do we have to apply things in india and if so i mean there's so, there must be a unilateral or what i call a global protocol and everybody's true we must apply these protocols to everyone and this is a, a on a things change unfortunately things are changing on a daily basis and it's very hard to uh, especially for our federation uh to try to pick up the rules and apply something in europe and try to apply them in south america in south america things are very very difficult as we speak uh things in brazil argentina uh i was recently speaking to a colleague in colombia everything is shut down and things are getting worse and worse there seems to be a tendency that people do want to come and i think it's very vital here to understand that the more we communicate among us the more information that is shared this is the best option that we have so far Yes, I totally uh, agree with Humani and hybrid will pick up as the months and the years develop. Uh virtual exhibitions we have to see how all these things will develop. A very interesting point Vika said that the next generation, true, the next generation will have probably and they will look back to us at these discussions and say what were these people talking about, you know? I mean, uh, 10 years down the road they knew what was going to happen. Um I think that it's very vital here to understand that protocols are a must and I think that uh guidelines that we must share among us are very important to continue and to try to allow people to understand that we are waiting we are here uh with safety is the number one priority and we do allow people to be safe I mean there are tracking devices there are apps there are thousands of things that we are able to do to provide the safety 
mass gatherings, concerts, this and the other, are not safe and they're not being controlled. I mean, you see things going on that is unbelievable what is happening. I think that as time develops, uh, I, I, I think that people must understand that protocols are there and that we should abide to them. Thank you for your comments. And uh, I'd like to uh, move to uh, Igor. And Igor, uh, back there in Germany, we know that uh, the government has uh, given clearance for the uh, trade shows, exhibitions, conferences to restart. Uh, what what uh, going ahead would be the new protocols and uh, uh, the new measures which will be in place, uh, which will be different from the past? In particular, if you can mention some of the things, I know safety, health and safety measures towards that will be vital. But uh, if you can mention some of the key things which we are going to implement before the show to make sure that the attendees come and get the confidence of coming at the show floor. Although I would say, or I would probably uh, make the statement that it's going to be different this fall, uh, the beginning of next year and then by the end of next year. So we'll, we'll have to be adaptable and, and see what this situation will allow and whatnot. And I think our industry has proven in the past years that we can be flexible and can adapt to the circumstances. And we are ready to prove that to everyone else. And before I answer the question, I want to comment on, on one or two statements before, like um, that the industry needs to be ready to come. I think that's, that's definitely the crucial part. Uh, what well, because, uh, because said that the people need to want to come to us before, before we can uh, implement all the safeties and, and really make, make sure that we communicate it right and tell them what kind of protocols we are following. Um, for, for the shows that are being planned for yeah, this month and next month, um, unfortunately the trend is also there that people are still not having seen any shows happen. So that the role model, the best practice model has not been there in Germany yet. So it's Shows are legally allowed and are scheduled to happen, but everyone looks at the other messies and the other messa trade first. So who is first um, to show a best practice video or best practice best practice explanatory video that it's been taken part? And pictures of Chinese exhibitions don't work in Europe, unfortunately, but we can show it worked well. Um, so what we have done, as Messi mentioned, is a couple of simple things. Uh, it's a lot about, as I mentioned before, tracking of people. Um, everyone has to be registered with every every data. Um, I think that's uh, that's a mandatory thing in order to not only inform people about any circumstances which are ongoing, but also in case anything would happen at a trade show, which we all don't want, it would, that would mean negative negative in a PR for our industry. That people could be informed about any cases at a venue. So full registration means full data, full data available to, to vendors, uh, full data being available to, um, to us as an organizer in order to inform them for tracking. Um, that implements again another service for exhibitors that I mean lead tracking on site was all, always available. Now it's, now it's there anyway. Uh, so you, you get it basically free of charge. Our exhibitors are getting tracking devices for to scan the information on the badges of visitors anyway to see uh, who will be there. Um, there are a couple of rules um, and, and implementations that will be followed in terms of stand buildings and construction, which are mandatory in order to guarantee a certain uh, distancing and certain um, certain safety measures when you want to discuss face to face and directly with one to one person. So. Um, stands with, with glasses in between, uh, meeting cubes, etc. So a couple of innovative new ideas that stand builders have came up also in order to guarantee, a, let's say, a 95 to 99 percent experience similar to the ones we, we enjoyed before. Um, and beyond that, there is, there is still on the radar what's going to be it like in 2021. We want to go back to the normal. We all know it's going to be a new normal. Um, but we all want to reduce, let's say, the, the percentage of one or two exhibitors and visitors per 10 square meters back down to four and then maybe two and then have uh, enjoy, enjoyable um, after parties at, at exhibitions as well where people can, can enjoy uh, being together and not uh, fearing um, any, any kind of infection cases. I saw even models that you had, you had wristbands about, uh, I want to meet face-to-face -face, or please keep a distance, etc. 
might work for smaller events where, where you have 100 to 200 attendees, where it's a little bit more seeable. Um, we are looking back, we're looking at thousands of uh, visitors uh, and, and exhibitors being at one place. So again, coming back to the tracking, how many people are in each hall? Is it safer or less safe? I mean safe, or is it, people can decide themselves. Do I want to enter a hall where there are 10,000 people right now? Or will I skip that hall and move to the next hall where maybe there are only 3,000 people inside? It's their own choice. Uh, so we want to make that date, that data and that information um, available and, and very transparent to everyone who's, who's going to be there. Um, and I believe that transparency and communication is a key in that, in that difficult time anyway. And taking some cues from you, I'd like to move to uh, Himani. And uh, Himani, uh, we all know that, uh, you know, uh, the shopping malls have resumed their operations, the airports have resumed their operations, they are following their protocols, but then they're also using a lot of technology, especially the airports. At various touch points, they've used a lot of innovative technologies. Can our industry also adopt a lot of technology uh, to restore the confidence of the participants? And in this front, venues can also uh, handhold the organizers and they can support the organizers going forward. What are your comments in this regard? Uh, Raghav, I feel uh, Vikas was saying that India, you know, government is not taking initiatives. That we know that, you know, uh, exhibition industry is, does not get a lot of boost from the Indian uh, government. So the industry itself is working to improve or uh, take it, make, grow it. So we have to do that again. As an industry only, we have to do that again. And if we talk about economy, that might take a little longer time to revive world across. But we cannot wait for that because I think it depends from industry to industry. A lot of industries are ready for exhibitions because exhibitions are the economy boosters, are the business drivers for them. Uh, they are the only platform through which they thrive. You know, we also get queries from our exhibitors and visitors. When is the show happening? So what we just need is a green signal for the government to segregate an exhibition as a organized B2B event and not a mass gathering. That is what we require for the, from the government as of now. Rest, I think we as an industry can do it. Talking of technology, talking of SOPs, SOPs are already in place. I have, uh, you know, we were just discussing and thinking that, you know, we need to have a um, separate agency who would take care of COVID compliances. So, you know, because we as an organizer have so many things on hand to do, we might not be able to execute everything ourselves. So I think the role of a COVID compliant agency will come in where we can propagate to the exhibitor and the visitor that we are a COVID compliant show. What uh, the confidence of the exhibitor depends on one, his safety and his team and whether visitor will come in or not. So to get that safety is foremost. Uh, there is a new normal. He is going to be prepared that the number of visitors would be less. But of course, that does not mean that he will not get business. So the exhibitor is prepared for the new normal. The visitor is also prepared for the new normal. He knows I'm not unnecessarily going to an event. I would only go, I would only risk myself when I really have business to do there. So the COVID compliant agency who's take, going to take care of the safety. Then second, our registration systems of uh, filtering out unnecessary crowd and just getting the right kind of buyers to the show. That is another, another area which will uh, gain more importance. And just by saying, you know, in our sales pitch is going to be different now. We are not just going to talk about what our show is and what it is. We have to tell them what we have in place. Uh, the masks, the gloves, et cetera, et cetera. I think that list everybody knows what we need to be safe. But we need to build a video to show him that how the new normal is going to look like, how he is going to be safe, how he can do business in a safe environment. So there is where I think the venue's role would also come in because the organizer, the venue and the agency have to work in tandem with each other where the venue uh, would have to take care of air purification, uh, venue disinfection, and uh, you know washroom hygiene which is ignored in a lot of venues uh, in india plus there would also be a need uh, for the flexibility from the venue organizers in terms of uh, 
pricing uh, space because we would need isolation zones. We would need bigger aisles. So a lot of space would go into non-commercial activities. So there is where the venue in terms of giving flexibility to the organizer, giving these uh, leverages, plus taking care that the venue is safe by disinfection and hygiene and all those things in place. So I think this is how technology, this is how changes, this is how the new normal is going to work. I think uh, when the Taj bombing happened, people didn't stop going to hotels after that. It was just that the x-ray machines, frisking machines, everything came place in all hotels. So people accepted that. So it's just the new normal that we all have to adapt to. Yes, very rightly said. And uh, with this, I'd like to move uh, to Mr. Deyaka Reddy. And uh, Mr. Reddy, I would like to ask you, since you are a, a conventional association where, uh, you know, of the printing industry, uh, you have a lot of members from all over India. Uh, are your members adapting to the new normal in terms of attending webinars? How technologically, technically oriented are they, whether they can browse through the uh, uh, online events? And also tell us what is the mindset of your global counterparts? We know that there are some other associations all across the globe, just like in India, we have IPAMA. We have some other leading associations for the rest of the world. Uh, what, what is their mindset on online events? We have also done quite a few uh, webinars as uh, our members quite uh, efficient on technology part. You know, we are all machine manufacturers. So that is the basic uh, requirement. Uh, but, uh, uh, but 2021, maybe probably second quarter or up to second quarter, you know, unless until we don't get the, uh, the COVID vaccine. What I would suggest all the organizers or fair uh, uh, companies, we can't focus on international business for sure. This is the fact you have to consider. For example, I would, uh, we have just uh, canceled our Drupa participation with 27 exhibitors from a IPAMA uh, site, uh, you know, uh, Igor must be knowing it's a German Messe uh, Dusseldorf show. We just canceled it personally because we do understand there would be a travel uh, complaints unless until we don't have a vaccine. So as an association, what we have to do? So when my exhibitor is not getting his international visitor, what I can do as all the speakers were speaking about hybrid, we are, we are planning hybrid. So we are giving what a regular exhibition along with the hybrid exhibition. But as I said in my opening also, regular exhibitions cannot be replaced, especially in our uh, capital equipment. It cannot be. And I do agree with Himani ji, uh, last couple of shows in print pack, you know, because you know ours is 80,000, 90,000 in six days. Now, second, one more thing organizers has to understand, uh, most of the shows in India, especially, not only in India, across the globe also, it will be three day shows. IPAMA is one of the pioneer. Our shows are five days and six days. From ages, from ages, from ages. Maybe this, this gives maybe private uh, companies, it may not be possible. But as an association, it is our responsibility to give it back to our members. You know, uh, it, it does not make any difference. You know, if we lose a, a, a certain money for maintaining uh, extra days, uh, we don't mind. And secondly, as a SOPs, you no, know, uh, uh, Imani was talking about uh, masks. Last few exhibitions, Ipama is giving on on setup days. You know, you all know India. We use lot of wood, lot of wood in exhibition. When compared to Japan and other developed nations, they use less wood. So there will be huge dust in the exhibition uh, uh, area. We had been distributed thousands of masks, free of course. We just kept mask centers. Anybody can pick it up. So that is, you know, we have already proven our uh, integrity towards our visitors, exhibitors, service providers. So we are talking about those parameters, definitely. And I do agree with Imaniji. Yes, COVID, con uh, COVID uh, uh, agencies. We have already discussing. We are already discussing. Probably these things will really boost visitor as well as exhibitor. So uh, when we talk about other uh, uh, and what we are trying to do it for our exhibitors for export uh, sale. So we are planning to do virtual shows. We are in still since you know ours is association. Imani is a, a private organization. She can take a decision in overnight. But in association, we need approval from our members. We are still discussing. You know, we are already discussing with a lot of uh, virtual uh, uh, providers, and probably we give uh, virtual for our international visitors. So these small things can be definitely uh, bring back exhibitions into uh, glory again. 
but as i said ex organizer as well as venue providers maybe i i i, I truly agree with ravi ji also venue providers and organizers should work in hand in hand they know it is possible otherwise maybe one exhibition two exhibitors uh, uh, if they don't do follow sops probably again the government says please shut exhibition industry so that should not happen you know here restarting is not the question restart in a proper manner that is very very important so i uh, i urge ravi ji to give uh, sops to their organizers also so then only uh, we we will be bounced back and this is very important not just to uh, not just to evolve but also to revive our industry going ahead and uh, with this i'd like to move to mr ravi boratka and uh, mr boratka i'd like you to elaborate on two fronts going forward uh, will our industry become more regional and will it encourage smaller shows and thirdly can we use the fomo factor the fear of missing out uh, in our shows to bring back the participants good question raghu i feel ki uh, not exactly regional but yes initially for some time maybe the smaller the smaller in size a very niche kind of uh, exhibitions or trade shows with a smaller groups but maybe it can be more in numbers so that way initially we will have to do the exhibitions naturally because of the maybe you know uh, all these social distancing norms maybe the restriction or maybe adopting a number of people in a particular venue so initially yes we'll have to focus on a smaller groups or niche exhibitions and then uh, slowly as the things improve maybe the size will start increasing again secondly about the fear factor i feel ki fear factor can be negated in a proper way see initially when lockdown happened everybody was at home everything was at stand still but slowly this when the process of reopening has begun you can see though not everything has started but industry has many industries have started with certain you know maybe with 50% capacity or 70% capacity things are moving ahead similarly for exhibitions also once we start and we start with the proper norms as maybe what uh, mr reddy said or initially what uh, peter had told us or what igor also mentioned and himani also talked about we'll have to adhere to certain uh, protocols and that will only give confidence to the exhibitors to the business visitor and then i think that will spread across and which i feel is really possible because as himani mentioned ki after 26 11 or maybe you know 9 11 attacks entire uh, hotel industry and um, other public functions we have seen that they are following a different set of uh, security protocol but everything is happening or what's happening till this uh, pandemic started so similarly in exhibitions also the things will definitely happen with with a new uh, changes as a venue operator we are also prepared now we know ki maybe after every session or every day we will have to do a very good sanitization we have to be prepared for that there has to be uh, you know uh, like uh, you have a uh, uh at places at the entrance where you check the luggage or uh, you screen the baggage similarly you will have to have uh, to check the temperatures or other things you know or maybe sanitizers everywhere or at mr reddy all mentioned ki the mask has to be available for each one of them at various places so this kind of protocols have to be followed and most importantly particularly in india we will have to follow very good hygiene for uh, food and beverages but that is one area where venues will have to take a great precaution ki water food is served what their food courts were having have to adhere to very strict guidelines strict health and hygiene protocol i think once we do that i'm sure ki that's going to give a good uh, confidence to the participants and initially and the venues one more important thing raghav here that venues has to be prepared themselves to host the hybrid shows seamlessly when i say because if there's a small group of 100 200 uh, people attending uh, from the regional area or from india india and if you want to connect to the international community there has to be a very good technology connect it should happen very seamless there should not be glitches in between so for that only service provider may not be able to do but a venue uh, uh, has to have to build that infrastructure so that you can bring in the people from various countries 
like you are asking question or somebody from some country may ask a question and speaker here is going to answer that as if they are here only there are skills around so you have see ultimately in exhibition and other thing what is important is to deliver that experience that everybody feels together so when you will have to change themselves to give that experience that if maybe those who are physically there and those who are joining them digitally they all feel that they are part of the same ecosystem and if you are able to deliver that experience i'm sure you are going to get more traction and more people will come forward absolutely you mentioned some very significant points that the venues have to evolve themselves to the next level maybe set up virtual studios uh, simultaneous virtual studios to host hybrid shows and uh, immersive technology to ensure seamless uh, you know transmission virtual reality uh, well with this i like to move to our last round and this is a surprise quick fire round so we just require quick fire answers from all our speakers and uh, i'll start with mr vikas which and i like to ask uh, mr vikas three to yeah give me three points which you feel would change in our setup and operations on floor going ahead when we resume our uh, normalcy in our industry um you know so while, so while we can be um, at one level we can be quite downbeat about the situation right now as an organizer and venue but i think um I think there's actually some also gives a great opportunity especially for the India market because you know I've been operating in India for just over 10 years and I consistently have battled with venues with regards to you know they Indian venues I mean to the point are terrible right we do not have many world class venues in India and when you do have one or two the management of them is not up to the mark right um and you see that from the venue point of view you then go down to the service provider point of view and i'm being quite frank because i've had my battles with venues and it's a very transactional relationship i know himani talked about bathrooms and hygiene venues don't care about that and we have constantly had to take backlash from our visitors and our brand about the quality of the hygiene in venues venues say that's not our responsibility so i think this actually is a good opportunity for the especially in india to really look at itself as a you know as a facility and host for organizing events and say you know what do we want to raise up raise the bar because you know we are really operating at developing world standards if i want to be blunt about it you know we're not a match for any you know international um, market okay so mr Vich, this is a quick fire point. round you have to give me three pointers so i think i yes. think venues i think venues need to step up to the mark right they need what? to understand that they are not transactional it's not about you know let's we are going to they will pass the buck on to the organizer say right you want better okay. hygiene you pay for it you want an agency you pay for it they mm. need to say we're in a relationship here you mentioned malls malls are empty in india because the landlords are pay charging too much to the lease holders so the the lease holders are not returning venues have to say right we are going to do what it takes to get you back as an organizer because we are going to flip to smaller shows so i think venues have to step up service providers need to step up because there's a lot of um poor ready mention that wood and all the dust and that it's disgraceful the way we operate in india so i think service providers need to step up their game a lot of them will go out of go out of business because they won't meet basic health and safety standards which will be the de facto that we need to operate in india and i think the other thing is we need to work much more closely as a uh community i know you have iiia but iiia is very much for its members right it's not involving all the sme levels unless you are a paying member we've worked really hard in the salon beauty and wellness industry to bring tens of thousands of salons and lakhs and lakhs of therapists together to look at how do we get people back in salons um and i think this industry really needs to look at that and say how do we get uh the indian market up and running right and we have to work much more closely all the way down from your top 10 organizers to the fact that the most of the market is small sme players organizers and service providers and that we don't have a collective force right now to represent that body sure so sure. so uh, but i do wish to contest your point on uh, lack of purpose built venues in india but i'll leave to uh, some other session I mean, if you look uh, at china china has 
hundreds of them. Yes, India, we'll, you, won't, we'll, you won't name just, more than five. Yes, but uh, but we we're still upgrading our venue venue capacity aggressively in India, and I do see uh, some good changes and momentum in this regard. And uh, uh, with this, I'd like to move uh, to our next panelist, and I'd like to take my next question to Mr. Igor Palka. Uh, Igor, you have to give me three things which you feel our industry has to do to stay ahead of people like Alibaba, LinkedIn, Facebook, which may very well anytime launch their own events. A good question. If we would have known that, uh, we would have be we would have implemented in the past already without COVID. Um, <laughs> nevertheless, I think we. And that's 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 been in the past, and that's going to be in the future. We need to know what's uh, what's the demand of our customers. That means the visitors, the exhibitors. What is really what they need to have, and implement it and ensure that um, basically create the ROI for 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 our customers at Trade First. And that's going to be it's going to be through hybrids. That's going to be I, I like to uh, say through the digital extension of our physical events. Um, and uh, that being said, what else, what else do we need to stay ahead of them? Um, the 365 platforms, we, we, know, we know better. We have industry experts. I mean, we have here, um, in terms of, for me, ceramic trade fairs, construction machinery shows, etc. We know we are dealing with our customers on a day-to-day -day basis in specific industrial domains. So we know what, what they are dealing with. And creating those 365 platforms throughout the year is, I think, a, a, um, a way ahead. So they don't need to go to a generic page like whatever Alibaba. I don't want to name any specific, um, and and generate that that content, that that matchmaking purpose, that all of that. But where the meeting place, the exhibition is eventually the 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 feast of the industry, where the gathering everyone is looking forward to, will become um, the that place where everyone is looking forward to. Um, and the third point, um, I, leave it, I leave it to the rest of the audience to come up with a third point. Yeah. I take that, I take that. And uh, with this, I'd like to move to uh, Mr. Peter. And uh, please tell me three things that stand contractors need to do going forward to survive and thrive. Openness. They have to be very open and understand clearly the situation we are going through. Honesty in the sense that we have to share the information among us and be sincere that we, when we are building, when we are offering things, it is based on actual, uh, again, the rules and regulations that every, every person throughout the world is applying. And I think last but not least, adaptation. We have to be able to adapt. And uh, honestly, I think that we are seeing this on a daily basis. We are adapting. We are seeing that, uh, unfortunately, yes, there will be many companies within our uh, industry that will close down, but those that survive, I can honestly tell you that they will be able to learn and understand and control fear. And by controlling fear, they will be able to allow people to come most rapidly into our industry and hopefully uh, restart all this once again as quickly as possible. Wow, wonderful. And uh, I'd like to go to Mr. Ravi. I'll just slightly tweak my question because I saw you writing something, so I'll ask you a separate question. Uh, Mr. Boratka, tell me two to three things that come to your mind when you think about the future of our industry. Well, I think about the future, one has to be very positive because challenges will be many, but you have to tide over there. It all depends on how innovatively you find your solutions and move ahead. So one has to be positive and want us to believe that there is a good future and find a way out. Okay. Would you like to make more comments or should I, should I take this from you? Well, this is one and secondly, one has to uh, believe in cooperation because ours, you know, is a, uh, we bring many people together to make something happen. You know, it's always a venue, event organizer, the service providers, you know, they're all people. So one has to understand each other very well and has to cooperate and learn to survive and progress. I think these are the two critical things one has to have, one has to follow to move ahead. Thank you. And I'd like to go to Mr. Reddy. And uh, Mr. Reddy, my question to you is, two things that you are doing with your team right now to prepare for the future. Uh, yeah, it's a good one. So first one is uh, creating uh, uh, you know, confidence to participate in exhibition first. 
And secondly, uh, the second one, as you all know, this pandemic has created a huge financial losses. We are working on it. We are working on it. So uh, probably we are going to talk to all our vendors right from the exhibition fairground, uh, service providers. So we have been doing the same thing. Reduce your profits this time. This year is only a survival. Unless until you won't survive, you will not be uh, carry forward into 2022. So we have been doing this and uh, hopefully uh, I'm sure uh, we will succeed in this. Well, those are very good points. And finally, I go to uh, Ms. Imani in the last, last but not the least. You made some significant contribution to this forum, Imani. And uh, uh, I'd like to ask you two to three things that you'd like to highlight that uh, you are working on to upgrade the skills of your team to prepare them for the future with your employees, I mean to say. Uh, they are learning to live with adversity. They're learning to you know, adapt to the new normal. They're learning to uh, be resilient, come out of this situation, and they are facing a lot of, uh, you know, challenges from all fronts, but they're all prepared. They are ready with answers to everything. They are ready with the new normal, and uh, they have learned a lot of uh, technology so, you know, they are trying to seamlessly uh, imbibe technology into their uh, working process and disseminating the same to exhibitors and visitors both. So, you know, the new normal world of exhibitions, uh, shaking hands might be replaced with a namaste. But yes, we are all ready to face the new normal world. Wonderful, and I think you mentioned about uh, the team being ready for the for the for the for being more resilient, and I think it all boils down to the leadership. And I think we've had some wonderful leaders today at our forum, and uh, that their workforce is in safe hands. Uh, uh, a, a small food of thought while before we leave. I recently saw an opening for a virtual event manager. So things are changing quite quickly in our industry and new skills will be required in the future. With this, I'd like to thank all our esteemed speakers who have joined us, taken out their precious time to, to uh, deliberate on this very significant topic. And I'm sure the attendees have gained a lot of valuable insights and uh, from, from the speakers today. With this, thank you very much once again and uh, please do take out time to visit our virtual platform also. Thank you.